Hey yo, Don Corleo, I'm so drunk. Really? Oh. oh, oh, it's okay, Dom. I'm feeling way better now. Thanks for the support, though. Lately, Dom Corleo has been a topic of discussion, and this time it's not because of his jorts. He's the latest artist to pop off in the underground, thanks to TikTok, which is a lot more calculated than you may believe. We'll get into that later. Take a quick glance at him or listen to his music, and it's easy to say he's just one of the destroyed, lonely influence artists he kind of is that have just spawned out of nowhere, like Hard Rock, Rolling Thrash. Southside Silhouette, and even some of Tana's newer work. Dom, on the other hand, has been in the background for a while now, dating back to 2017. He's worked with artists such as Summers, Sofago, Autumn, and Destroy Lonely. And not only has he worked with a variety of artists, he's also explored a variety of genres. Name a genre, he's done it. I'm not joking, he's made R&B, plug and b regular rap, plug, a style similar to Travis Scott, Glow, the list goes on. I'm actually surprised he hasn't made hyperpop. He's been under heavy scrutiny from his fans, who believe he's as original as a rock and just hops on every new trend. In this video, I'll be going over Dom's upbringing, music, come up, and give you both sides of the debate to decide whether he's unique and original or just a cheap clone. Dom Corleo was born Dominique Anthony Paoletti. His grandfather, Nicolai Paoletti, was a made man, but in 1986, the feds busted him for tax evasion, fraud, money laundering, arson, and on three counts of petty theft, a sentence he's still serving to this day. Before the feds got him, Dom's grandfather was seen in a pub which broke one of the Ten Commandments of the Mafia. As a result, other families refused to do business with the Paolettis and their empire fell. Luckily, after the feds repossessed all their belongings, the pale ladies were left with a banana stand, whose walls, unknown to the feds, were lined with cash. The banana stand was sold and financed their move to Roseville, California, where Dom's parents lived a humble life, and where Dom was ultimately born. He lived there until his family moved to the Bay Area in 5th grade. His dad introduced him to old school hip-hop, but he mainly listened to Drake, Kirko Bangs, who you will later remix, Chief Keef, Future, and Lil Wayne growing up. His music tastes also branched out into old rock and alternative bands. He would steal his sister's iPod and listen to the music she had downloaded. So through her, he got introduced to Fall Out Boy, My Chemical Romance, PTV, Deftones, and My Bloody Valentine. His interests are also pretty relatable. Fashion and gaming. He played games like Call of Duty, Halo, and sports like 2K. A few years back, he said that when he's not making music, he's looking online for clothes, and this still rings true. Back then, he was into this little brand called Number 9. Gap and Subi. He kind of dressed like the stereotypical hype beast, to be honest. He even had the matching haircut. If you picture one of those kids on the Playboy Cardi subreddit, you're pretty much picturing Dom back in the day. He originally started making music to try out something new. It wasn't serious, mostly just messing around to kill time because he had nothing better to do besides school. Back then, he went by Poppy Dom. Later on, he changed it to Dom Corleo, probably after Don Corleone, a character from the movie Godfather. Humble Beginnings is how I would describe his first recording setup. A PlayStation headset, the free audio recording software Audacity, and his or his friend's bedroom. His first real mic was a snowball microphone, a mic everyone who makes music or records videos like I do has heard of, which he bought off a girl from a school for just $20. At the time, he was just making meme music and having fun with it. In late 2017, Don was introduced to Summers and Autumn. He was immediately drawn to it. The music they were making was nothing he had ever heard of and he really liked it. In school, he tried to put his friends on and it went something like this. Hey guys, you listen to that new pack runner? Yo, that's trash. Never play that again. He continued to listen to them in private. One day, Dom decided to buy a $30 open from Autumn instead of a new Gap hoodie. He started making Plug and B that year and would work with producers like Goyard and Zanking. After posting a snippet to an unreleased song, Dom DM'd Sofago, who had less than a thousand followers at that point, to hop on it and began working with them. A bit later, Fago asked Dom to be part of his group Runner World, which consisted of Fago a couple of his producers, some sixes, Chulo, and Fago's friend DK. Sadly, this era ended after Dom and Fago had a falling out over who had the better Gap collection. But jokes aside, they actually did fall out, um, but Dom wouldn't say why. Looking back, he described it as a great way for him to meet new people. He eventually met Summers, Goonie, Isaiah TG, and Autumn through group chat, and then in Houston in 2020. At the time, he was working at Home Depot. He'd express his frustration on TikTok, the platform that would later change his life. Even though he just graduated, Dom was tired of working his 9 to 5 and couldn't wait for his music to go up. In an interview, he shared his thoughts on TikTok and building a fan base. He spoke about the importance of TikTok in the music industry. He understood how great TikTok was for promoting music and would encourage his friends to make TikToks his own music. For some context, this was still before the mainstream saw TikTok as the promotion machine it is. Most people and artists bashed the app since it still had the musically image behind it. Dom realized the potential and embraced it. And I used like TikTok a little bit to promote my yeah. and that, like it, it works, works, bro. Yeah. Like if you're an artist and you don't take advantage of TikTok, like you sleep, bro. He even gave advice to artists with hot songs from TikTok, advising them to keep their momentum going by constantly dropping. You just gotta, bro, you gotta know how to keep the, the momentum yeah. like, as an artist. If you got like an opportunity, like say you blow up on TikTok, yeah. keep the momentum, like keep doing and it looks like Dom is taking his own advice after going viral himself. Additionally, Dom speaks about growing a cult fan base, people that'll rock with you no matter what, and he expressed his desire to form one. What about a cult fan base like makes you want to have one, you know? Because th those are like real fans. It's organic. 
I, I want everything with me to be super organic and like, you know, like not artificial, nothing fake. Mm -hmm. Cause those are the fans that's really gonna like defend you and f with you in the long run. Like Dom Corleo, I'm so drunk. By the way, he can't even drink legally yet. Dom Corleo wants a cult fan base. He wants everything to be organic and authentic, not fake and manufactured. Here's the irony. He wants everything to be super organic and real, but in the same interview, he tried to force an image of him being around girls because it looked cool. I'm not sure. Don't ask me. I don't know what bro was thinking. It was painfully awkward and definitely the opposite of organic and authentic. It's as organic and real as Rich and Miriam Summer's friendship. One of the few times I'd say he actually deserved to be clowned on. But hey, his interview did do good numbers, so it wasn't all bad. Dom has also been the most recent artist to receive the Hyperpop Daily Stimulus Package. Dom Corleo, I'm so drunk! And due to his consistency, his fan base is growing. I just wouldn't say they're all diehard. But it's enough for him to have supported shows and his TikTok comments look like this. I'm so drunk! I'm not gonna go over most of his discography because a lot of his earlier stuff is trash. Respectfully though, I'm sure he'll even admit it. His first official song on SoundCloud is called Quarterback and it's just a regular rap song. It's pretty decent for this type of music. His next song, Prada Fiend, is just a plug song and then he starts dropping plug and B. So not being able to stick to a genre isn't anything new for him. In Elegance, one of his first plug and B songs, he pays homage to his favorite actress, Gina Valentina. I think she stars in some classic Italian films. So shout out to Dom for the cultural reference. He did this while stealing Summer's flow entirely. He has two songs with Sophie Fago, Jug, and Number 9. Number 9 is a pretty good song and definitely some of the better work out of his older music. Time Goes On is an important milestone in his career. It's a coming of age moment in his life. He's older now, his voice has gone deeper, and he even mocks how he used to sound. He's getting money and his younger self would be proud of him. Not really, it's Cap because he's working at Home Depot for $12 an hour. I actually respect him for working a job though and not doing fraud like every other rapper. It's a testament to his work ethic and Dom even said his move to Arizona was to help his parents out, which is pretty cool. Nevertheless, Time Goes On is a great song and it showed a lot of potential. In the club, it's a remix of one of the artists he grew up listening to, Kirko Bands. Really underrated and it fit well with Dom's sound. His next idea was to sound like Chief Keef, and despite the moderate success he had with it, some fans were not having it. In Baby I'm Rude, his sound is a mix of Chief Keef and speaker knockers. Some of the comments were already calling him out for biting though, writing, you're not Mr. Keef, find a wave. Ball Like I'm Kawhi in Milwaukee is my favorite song by him. Before we talk about the actual song, I just have to point out Kawhi never actually played for the Bucks or even went that crazy playing against them other than this one time in 2019, so he lost me there. And Kawhi isn't even known for being a shooter, which is what he's kind of comparing his shooters to, I guess. I don't know. So this song blew up after Twisty P, you remember that guy, crashed his car on Instagram Live playing the song while he had the Yoda filter on. One of the funniest things I've ever seen, and Dom's song was like half responsible for it. He raps about fraud, money, and his nonchalant attitude towards women. Garden of Eden is the first time Dom was really proud of his music. You can tell because it's the first project of his he hasn't deleted. After this, although completely erased, Dom dropped an album called Planet Pink. The beat selection was amazing, but Dom butchered the delivery, and I remember he even called it trash in one of his lives. It's important though, because it foreshadowed his newer sound. One of the songs, Gorgeous, was featuring Destroy Lonely. The original version with Dom is pretty bad, but he redid it and redeemed himself. He dropped another tape, Forgive Me For My Sins, which he said himself was heavily influenced by Rodeo and Birds In The Trap by Travis Scott, who he listened to throughout all of high school. Hype, the most popular song of the tape, is all that remains on his SoundCloud. In it, Dom describes the life of a girl that lives her lifestyle just for validation, going out, posting on Instagram, and her designer. It doesn't matter to him because he'll have a good time with her. He dropped two more plug projects after this, but it doesn't really matter because they went nowhere. He just wasn't wasn't consistent enough in making good songs in this genre. So he decided to throw away the Gap hoodies, put on some Rick, I'm just kidding, he's been into fashion, and try a new style. On May 27, 2022, he dropped On God, a song with a Destroy Lonely beat, accompanied with a music video and another song, Trap Essay. This would birth his new sound. In the meantime, he dropped an EP with Goonie that was mildly successful. One of the songs is sitting at around 300,000 plays. Dom's big break would finally come after he dropped a song, Penthouse Shorty, that went viral on TikTok, the culmination of almost a year of Dom posting on the platform. By the way, he actually dropped another song similar to the style called Blow It the month before but deleted it after it flopped on SoundCloud so his resilience paid off. On top of that, his SoundCloud was being botted and it was actually a difficult time for him. In Penthouse Shorty, he's getting money or he's about to. He did like two interviews right after this and he has plenty of interviews in the past and always strapped up. I'm not sure about that one either but yeah. He's bragging about his designer clothes like Number 9 or Chromart and his taste in music like Deftones. Dom proceeded to drop five songs in a similar style after Penthouse Shorty blew up, something his past self advised artists in this situation to do. His next single uses the same sample Young Lean used in Ginseng Strip 2002. He dropped four more songs after that, Bloody Runs, Converse, Fly As Hell, and Party Girl. Content wise, they're very similar, and Dom made sure that every song had a video to maximize the exposure. Pretty smart move. Now that you're caught up with Dom's music and personality, it's time to talk about whether he's original or not. Of course, 
Stom has heard this criticism and has shared his thoughts on it. He said Destroy Lonely is his favorite artist currently, and usually his creative process consists of taking pieces of other people's art and incorporating it into his, which could be interpreted by haters as copying, but that's up to you. Since he grew up listening to old rock and alternative bands, he hopes to curate an alternative rock vibe throughout his music. Even in 2019, he was asked, he seemed to have music in almost every genre of hip hop, and even subgenres like plug and B. How are you able to set yourself apart in every style you decide to attack? He responded, I always just like to try new things. I try to push myself as much as possible and see what new sounds I can discover. Ever since I started making music, I found so many new genres and subgenres. It's really amazing. Dom isn't really a clone, to be honest. The only case you can make against him is how similar his delivery and beat selection is to Destroy Lonelies, which is undeniable. And because of that, I'd also like to point out he's going to hit a roadblock soon because you can never become bigger than the person you're copying or in this case, taking heavy inspiration from. So I'm excited to see what type of music he drops in the future. Hopefully he can differentiate himself further and he won't fall off. That's all for this video. I personally don't think he's a clone. I think he has a lot of potential. But I go by Rashad Fashir. Feel free to like, leave a comment if you have a question and I'll see you next time. I'm with Twiz right now. Twiz. You already know Twizzy hey. Rich in this b I'm signed. Hey. We got Don Corleo performing it. Hey, Dom, Dom. Hey, Hello?